Good afternoon, everyone. This is Kip. And I'm John. And this isn't Dave, as you can tell. Yeah, nope, not again. You're stuck with me again. Sorry. Dave's actually on the road. He's out experiencing some beautiful snow in the northeast part of our country at a couple events. So this is another episode. Last week, you got just Dave and John. This week, you just get Kip and John. So maybe next week, it'll actually be Kip and Dave. Yeah, I'm, I'm still second rate, though, right? Yeah, you're not second rate. You're not second in my book. <laughs> For all you out there, uh, we're trying to cover different topics. So I'm going to start this off with because the camera guy and the mic guy holding the mic, he's going to beat on me if I don't. But if you've got a specific topic, something you want to know about audio, whether it's kicker specific, not kicker specific, about anything we have, put it in the comments because the mic guy, who you can't see is off screen, we'll call him the mic guy, he's going to look at these later he's and going to help us. Well, I'm going to call him the mic guy. Okay, all right. He's the mic guy. Gotcha. He's actually, we don't give his name away. No. No. We won't sell him the name's Bill. Mike? Yeah, that's it, yeah. His name's Mike, the Mike. The Mike. Guy. But seriously, if there's something you want to know about, put it in the comments. He'll be able to look at these and help us give us an idea of what we may or may not cover in the future on another episode. Yep. And if, I promise if we don't know the answer, we will make it up, right? Well, I'll make up that I don't know the answer. There you go. <laughs> and then we'll find out what we don't know. Yeah, and then we'll tell them what the real answer is. You know, <laughs> truth be told, uh, don't let the hair fool you. I'm old. But I've been in the industry. I'm older. He's, he's older. But John and I have actually worked for Kicker now for... 21 years. 21 years each. Yep. Which combined makes us almost... 42. So we got about 42 years. And then before working here, I know John's had experience in the uh, retail world. 38 years still in this. Rep, things like yeah. that. So same here. I've probably got 36, 38 years of experience. So I got into audio and I just couldn't get out of it. It was something I enjoyed. It was fun. And I just happened to really like Kicker as a brand. And I ended up here for the last 21 years. Ditto. Ditto. So I've, I've known we John. We ended up at the same time. Same, same day. Time, same job. Same job. Same time. Same we day. We won't tell you that story. That's a whole other subject. It is a funny story. But one of the things we get asked, and a lot of you watching, you may be experienced audiophiles, meaning you understand what a woofer is, you know what a mid-range is, you know what a tweeter is, you understand electronic crossovers, you understand passive crossovers, you understand DB proctive. I mean, there's so many terminologies that you can learn and read about to understand not just car audio, but audio in general. Right. But we get asked all the time, and John's one of the guys here that brought this up as a topic, you know, that we still get asked, what are the basic components? What are the basic speakers? What, what is a tweeter? What is a mid-range? Yeah. What's a woofer? Why do I need it? What's this crossover thing, and why should I have one? So what we thought we were going to cover today is really break it down to some real basics on what are the basic speakers that are used in typically uh, designing an audio system. Now, some of you out there may say, well, there's more than that you're going to show me, Kip. There's actually mid-bass, and there's this, and there's that. And you can super break tweeters. it. Super tweeters. Super tweeters. You can go everywhere with this. from the 80s. So, <laughs> Way back there. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Your dogs love yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. Well, not so much. Not so much. But we're going to cover what we consider to be the basic building blocks of what it takes to build an audio system. He's showing you, obviously, some kicker products here. So with that said, I'm going to pull away. I'll let John pull back a little bit. Let the camera guy and the mic guy kind of come in here and go through what we've got sitting here on the table. So, John, as far as components go, what do you have sitting here on the table right now? What it doesn't really matter which model, just yeah. what do we have? Well, technically, we have three speakers up here and a crossover. Well, actually, we have four speakers. Well, actually, we have five speakers. What do we mean by all that? Well, it gets kind of crazy. Most car speakers or most speakers, you know, home speakers, are going to be a single driver that do everything. So that would be like this here. I mean, there's no separate. There's only one voice coil in here. There's only one powered driver. So this is considered a speaker. So is it a full range? Is it a tweeter? Is it a woofer? Well, you really don't know. It depends on what frequencies it plays. But remember, this one speaker can't do everything on its own. So it's not perfect. No. Even I mean, a perfect speaker is not even, perfect. As good as this really is, it can't do everything. Because you've got kind of the, the best of both worlds, kind of like an all-season tire. All-season tires don't work really good in the rain. Sure. They don't work really good in the snow, but they kind of work okay in both. So they don't really work really well anywhere. Yeah. So what we do to make up for that is we give speakers different duties. Okay. So, so what's this small one right here, John? What we got going on this here? This is called a tweeter. It is the smallest speaker, and it does the high frequencies, like your cymbals and your pss. You know, that's what this does. It's a very small light diaphragm. It can move very quickly up to 20,000 times a second. So it's got to start and stop up to 20,000 times a second each. So what John's saying, high frequency, he kind of alluded on a couple of there. What he's talking about is like when you hear the cymbals crash from a, a guy playing a set of drums, when you hear the upper end of a horn or a guitar or anything that's got high frequency. Air leaking. 
Eight. Yeah, that's this guy talking but you, to you. But if you got too much air, you can check your tires. Yeah, yeah you go flat. And you yeah. don't want to be flat. You don't want to be sharp. You want to be in tune. So. so this speaker is designed specifically to play those upper frequencies. What happens if we try to make it play lower frequencies? Um, this little guy says, goodbye. I'm done. I'm not going to play anymore. So you pretty much go bottom this out, make a popping noise, or eventually, pretty quickly, you'll actually burn the voice coil, and it's done. So we have to protect this from those lower frequencies. And so what's, guess what we use that? I don't know. What do we use, John? We use something called crossover. So this is a passive crossover. It takes the sound coming in, which is full range generally, and it divides it up between high frequencies and lower frequencies. So this is kind of like a traffic cop. Say high frequencies, you go over here. Low frequencies, you go over there. So it protects this little speaker from getting the damaging frequencies that this would normally receive and allows these speakers to handle a lot more power and play a whole lot louder without damage. Without damage. And another way for that to make sense, I mean, I know you can't see sound, you hear sound. So when we use the words like full range and high frequency and low frequency, but another way to look at it, and this will make it real easy for you, think of full range sound as white light the light you see every day and around you. But if you happen to see it filtered filtered through a prism or water droplets, i.e. a rainbow, then you see red, orange, yellow, green, green blue. blue, indigo, violet. You see those different colors. So think of this, what comes in as full range is white light. It's every color that you can actually see. Yep. And then what this does, it splits the light into different spectrums. So the, the higher light spectrums, it's filtered and sent to just the tweeter because if it tries to play the lower light spectrums, it goes boom, Goodbye. boom, sis, bye. Yeah. See ya. So you can't see it, but think of full range as white light. It's everything you can see, and this takes that white light and divides it into different bands, different spectrums. Two different bands. So this is a two-way passive crossover. Passive means it doesn't require extra power. Now, an active crossover, people might want to wonder the difference between passive and active. Passive takes speaker level coming in and divides it up. Active takes a signal coming in, divides it up before it goes to the amplifier, so the amplifier only produces those frequencies. A lot more efficient, but once again, it gets more expensive. We have more channels than an amplifier. And the most common way that people do active crossovers, the most common that we see in an average consumer use is you've got a bass amplifier, it's got a built-in crossover typically, yep. so it just plays low frequencies for your subwoofer, and then you've got another amp that you do an electronic high pass, and that's what feeds this crossover, yep. which is your... Did I drop something? knocked it apart. <laughs> It's, it's actually some styrofoam coming out. Yay. So, on this crossover, John, you said that it splits the frequency between this, which is high frequency, and then also... And that. And this one called a... Mid-range. Mid-range. Yep. Now, technically, if you guys don't know this, 70% of what you hear comes out of this speaker. 70% comes out of the mid-range. So this is actually the most important speaker you have. Probably about 5% comes out of this little guy. So that leaves another 20%. What are we missing? What... What's oh, Kicker do best? I know what we're missing. Yeah, what's We're Kicker missing do? the fun stuff. We're missing the woofer. Now, difference between a woofer and a subwoofer. This can be a woofer or a subwoofer. It depends on the frequencies I play to it. Really, really low frequencies, typically 100 hertz and below. If we send that signal to this, that's a subwoofer. If I play up to two or three or 400 hertz, that's going to be a woofer. A so woofer. this speaker can be a subwoofer or a woofer, depending on what signal I run to it. So there is no difference. So let's play some what-if scenarios here. So we've talked about full frequency sound. It's all the sound that you can hear from yep. 20 hertz, which is the lowest frequency, up to 20 kilohertz. So think of light again, all the light you can see. It's all the sound you can hear. We've talked about if we send low frequency to this little bugger, it typically self-destruction goes by. Yeah, they don't last very long. What happens if you send high frequency to this? It doesn't do much at all. You don't hear it. So, yeah. so it really doesn't hurt it. You yeah. just don't hear it. It can't no, reproduce it. can't it. do it. This can't start and stop 20,000 times a second. Think of your average, you know, sedan, your car. You know, starting and stopping at stoplights. It takes a lot of energy to start it, a lot of energy to stop it. You can't do it really quick. Same thing with this. This is a heavier cone. It's got to move farther. It's got a really big motor on the back. So it's got to start and stop the longer distance so it travels farther but slower so it produces more bass. You know, what's funny is I've been in the industry so long, and I know John's heard this. We have some, some jokes or analogies we use that, like, the perfect amplifier is just a straight wire with gain. No yep. electronics, no anything. It's just a piece of wire that you put that a signal on one end and make it louder. You know, in a perfect world. Didn't they do that on Star Trek? They try. Okay. I don't know if it works. They make microwaves in Star Trek. Ooh. We have those today. The food synthesizers. <laughs> Ooh, that's next. I want to <laughs> print a hamburger. But 
if you try to make a perfect speaker, and this is an example, like let's take this woofer right here. This is a great subwoofer. We could call it a perfect subwoofer if we wanted to from our standpoint, but it can't play mid-range and it can't play high end. So no matter how well we've designed it to do bass and call it a perfect speaker, it's incapable of giving us the voice or the high end that we need. Yeah, think of it another way, guys. Think about a transmission in a car. All you guys who are in the car, you know your car generally has at least three speeds in the transmission. That'd be like a woofer, mid-range, and tweeter, like first, second, third gear. First gear is for that takeoff off the line. Second gear is for that mid-range. Third gear is for cruising on the highway. That's kind of what we have here. We have a first, second, third gear. So if you want to get a great sounding audio system, it's really a mixture of choosing the right parts, the right crossovers, yep. the right crossover points, so that you are sending the right frequencies, the right spectrums of sound or light. If you want to think of light as an easier thing to see, I want to send you know red and orange this direction. I want to send green and yellow this direction. I want to send blue and indigo this direction. Which would be like, go? Well, purple, he's out back, but okay. we're not going to talk about him. I like purple. So when it comes to speakers, there's no one speaker that plays all the frequencies you it's need impossible. to hear properly. It's impossible. Yeah. So that's why we have speakers like a tweeter, like a mid-range, like a woofer. And like I said, this is the basics. I'm sure we may have some people who come and go, well, what about this? Or what about that? I mean, yeah, there's the so many other ways yeah. you can break it down. But this is really the basic building blocks of an audio system. So I noticed, John, you have a coax speaker yes. sitting here. Yes, I brought something else along for show and tell. This looks like one speaker, but in reality, it's two. If I take this cover off, this is another tweeter built onto this speaker. If you notice, it's attached. So this is a tweeter and a mid-range in one package, and this is typically called a coaxial. So a coaxial speaker means you've got a tweeter and a mid-range in one package. Now you may ask, where's the crossover? How do you fit this in there? Well, this has got a crossover, but it's actually inside this little pole piece, and that keeps the bass from going to the tweeter. It's a much simpler version of this, but it's still adequate to give you fantastic sound from this little driver. So if we look at, you know, you bring it up, that's a good point. Basically, the, the components on a crossover, if you break it down to its simplest parts, you've got a coil or an inductor, and you've got a capacitor. Those are the two basic parts that's of any crossover. Now, you can throw in resistors and other parts that are in there, but let's look at the basics. You've got a coil and you've got a cap. If you take a single capacitor and put it in series with a tweeter, it takes the base away. It takes the base away. And that's really what happens in a coax speaker like this. You typically have just a capacitor. Yep. That's which designed is inside the pole, which we can't see unless we break the speaker apart. We don't want to do that. It's a good speaker. And if you use just a cap, John, that would be a 6 dB per octave crossover? Yep. Or a first order. First order crossover. So when you go into separate components, like say you're going to upgrade, you're going to get into a higher end tweeter or higher end mid, you get into a crossover like this where you've got multiple coils and multiple caps. Now we get into 12 or 18 dB per octave right. crossover. Right, even 24 on the tweeter on that Even one. 24 on the tweeter on this yep. one. So with a steeper slope, which going from a 6 dB to a 24 dB, that's a pretty good representation yep. right it there. It rolls the frequencies off faster. So exactly. every order of 6, it rolls it off faster than the previous order. So a 12 dB per octave is going to roll off twice as quick as a 6 dB. Well, why is that important? Here again, if I try to run wherever our tweeter went, there it went, it's hiding from me. If I try to run... You know, even mid-frequencies through this at high power, it's probably not going to handle it, but low power, it'll handle it okay. So by putting a steeper slope, I take the low frequencies out of this much quicker, it can play a lot louder without damage. So that's the advantage of a steeper slope. And not just louder, but it can play cleaner. Cleaner. And, and it can play deeper in a design, so the yep. tweet can actually sound more natural. So you don't, you get, before it rolls off, it actually plays a lot flatter. Now, what's really interesting about this, we talk about this having a whole lot of components, this being 24 dB per octave, on this tweeter. Most companies use a first order or 6 dB per octave in the tweeter. This one actually uses 12. So right. it is a 12 dB built into this little speaker into that pole piece. That's pretty amazing, John, because you are yep. correct. Most companies, it's just a cap on the tweeter and you're yep. good to go. Oh, and I didn't mention this has protection built into it too. That's awesome. To help stop your tweeter from blowing. That's why these things, I mean, they're a great value. I mean, you're looking at $120 retail for a pair of these speakers with all that technology and they sound phenomenal. So now let's break this down into, okay, I'm a first-time guy. I know I've got audio in my car because I can hear it when I start the car. It's got something that plays back, whether it's my FM radio. They still play CDs today, John? I do. I do, too. Yep. CDs, MP3s, whatever it may be. But I want to get a basic audio system for my car. With you showing us a coax speaker right there, really, if you would just put a coax speaker in your car, that takes care of your mid and your tweeter. Yep. And then you add a good subwoofer. Should be good to go. And you're good to go. So that's absolutely the most common. 85% of all systems out there use that combination. 
I know we don't have it here on display, but that is a very common combination. And then to power that, and we don't have one here, but we'll do that on another episode, is we make an amplifier called the 805. Yep. And it's a five-channel amplifier, which gives you a 400-watt section to run your subwoofers and a 400-watt section to run all your mids and highs. So really, if you're just saying, man, I, I got audio, but I'm not looking to put thousands of dollars in. I just want great sound in my car. I don't want to take up the whole car. I just want better sound. That little five-channel amplifier. is phenomenal. And we'll do a lot of detail on amplifiers. But, you know, it does front, rear, and subwoofer, which pretty much are all zones of the car. Exactly. But, you know, what's really cool about that amp? You can actually program that amplifier to do tweeter, mid, and woofer. So it can become a three-way, not just a two-way with front and rear. Right, which even with a coax is still a three-way. It's just we're doing an active combined with a passive. Yep. So, you know, there's a lot. This can get very, very deep. You can get into a lot of different things. But the basic fundamental building blocks when it comes to, okay, I want to upgrade my audio system. What do I need? Well, you, you need a tweeter and you need a mid-range. Now, whether it comes as a component set like this or Co as a coax, like this. You've, done the, you've done the right job. You've gotten mid-range and you've got tweeter drivers yep. to handle what you need. And that right there will cover 75% you know, of your sound. Then you want to add a woofer with a little bit of bass, a little bit of kick. Uh, but wait a minute. We have a problem here, Kip. I was going to ask you something about that, John. Why is this one square? Why is this one round? Because uh, speakers have always been round. That's why they're round. But pi no. R square. Yeah, I R. Thought, I thought radius. Cake R square and pi R round. Yeah, yeah, we like pi and cake. That's a joke for those of you who get it with that. But in all seriousness, back in 2001? 2000. 2000. 2000, even. We, Kicker, introduced the square subwoofer. And in a nutshell, if you look at a square design versus a round design, let's take a 12 as an example. A round 12 versus a square 12. If you take a round kicker driver and put it on here, it has the same outer surface area that round will touch right here on all four square corners. But it will actually cave in, dive in here and cave in because it's circular. So there's more surface area on a kicker square driver than a kicker round driver. Exactly. About 25%. That's a lot. That's a quarter of a woofer. That's free. A, that's a quarter of a woofer for free. That's a real cool way to look at and that. And you know who said it best? Who? Huey. Woody. Huey Lewis. It's hip to be square. <laughs> Sorry, had to go there. John had to go there. Know. But, you know, subwoofers, this is an area that Kicker is very well known for. I mean, back in the 80s and the 90s, uh, we did a lot of competition, yeah. took a lot of awards, and proved that our products sound great. Yep. And they have a lot of output. They have a lot they of output. Are. So when you look at the driver here, for example, if you look at our L7, this is a square format driver, and the only reason that you'd want to go to a square driver over a round driver, like John said, it's more cone area. And in the example of a 12, it's about 25% more. Mm. More output. So if you've got more area to move the air, it's going to couple better, and you're going to get more in your car. Just don't be fooled, guys. A lot of people say it's a square speaker. It produces a square wave. What is a square wave? Um, there is such a thing as a square wave, but it doesn't come out of that speaker. Yeah, it's called distortion. Yes. And that's, you know, it's just people not understanding. This is a piston, guys. It moves air. The more air it moves, the more output you get. It doesn't matter the shape. You know, something that goes real well with that, and this is pretty cool. You ever throw a brick in a pond? I have. Does it go out in square circles or round circles? What do you guys think? No, it doesn't. It's round. It's round. So it's because the square, it doesn't matter what the shape is, it's just transferring energy into that from pond. that point. Radiates, and it radiates out. out in a circular pattern. So square cone, round cone, there's no such thing as square waves coming off yeah. of it. They're round waves. But that's the really cool part about the kicker square driver, the L7 technology. You get more output for a given size. So a square eight, you're going to get more than one of our round eights. What about other shapes? Do they make any difference? Well, you know, there's been a lot of shapes that have come out over the years. When we introduced the square woofer, I've seen triangles. Yep. I've how, seen many, how many triangle woofers does it take to make as much area as that? Well, it depends on how big a triangle it is. But if, say, it's an 8-inch triangle, and I want to compare that to the 8-inch square, it takes twice as many, right? At least. So now you've got to buy double the number of woofers to get the same output. So the whole point of this is it's performance. It's value-packed performance, more bang for the buck. Yeah, the bottom line is if you look at it from a pure physics, if you want to approach it, you can take just about any geometric shape, and then if you square that same shape off to its higher dimensions, you have more moving cone area. Yep. It's just pretty simple. So square is why we went to the square format. It took us a long time to get there. As I remember, about three and a half years of research and yeah, development we, went into that project. A lot of versions of that, but hey, you know, it works. Do you know, back in the 20s, they actually had square pistons on engines? No. They actually did. So it, here again, this is a piston. It moves air. doesn't matter the shape. The more air it moves, the more power. 
Well, that just proves Bell Bottom's got a second chance. I guess Square Pistons do too. 70s. Well, I'm an 80s guy. 70s. It's you know. okay. You're into corduroy. <laughs> so, if you have any questions about anything that's posted here, uh, be sure to throw it into the feed. We'll have our mic guy, Bill. That guy. Yeah, you said, you, his, you no. said his name. I can't hide it now. I wanted to keep him safe, but now he's no longer safe. What about safe. the camera guy? The Carlos. camera guy? Well, he's an international man of mystery. Oh, yeah. That was, mystery is the word. Mystery is the word. But seriously, if you have any questions about the basic building blocks or if you have a more advanced question, you can post them in here. The other thing that I would highly recommend is if you have any application-specific questions, hit us up right here direct at Kicker. Uh, We're here to help. That's what, we do this because we love it. We're passionate about audio. We love questions. We love t teaching people how it all works. And like I say, you know, you're never going to get a, a bad or a wrong answer. You know, if we don't know the answer, we're going to find it out. You know, we kind of joke about it. But, you know, when it comes to audio, there is no right or wrong. Just remember that. It's whatever you like. So. And if you want to hit us up directly here at the factory with a question, we have tech support here. It's yep. Monday through Friday, uh, 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. Central Time because we're in Oklahoma. And that number is 800-256-0808. So if you've got a pre-sale question, you have a post-sale question, you have a technical question, call us. That's what we're here for. What about email? Well, email. What about support at kicker.com? You could do that as well. There's yeah, another way to get a hold of us. You can. You can email support at kicker.com. It goes into the queue. Yep. You'll get assigned to one of the texts, and they'll get back a hold of you. Absolutely. So hopefully, if you had some confusion about, well, what is a tweeter? What is a mid-range? What is a woofer? Why do I need them? Maybe this gives you some fundamental building blocks. We got a little technical on crossovers, but not too deep. If you want to go deeper in another episode, let Please us know. Ask. We'll gladly do that. But until then, I wanted to sign off and say, this is Dave. And that's not Kip, but normally it would be. I'm Kip. No, I'm not. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this. Look forward to seeing you next week on the Kip and Dave Show. Have a good one. See you guys.